Good morning, church. I'm Justin. I'm the student pastor here at the Poto campus, and uh, it is awesome. We have 16 graduates, and so, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of graduates. That's awesome, and uh, uh, man, um, they're going from one journey to the next. Uh, we have a fairly new student to our church named JJ. JJ, you out there? There he is. I baptized him about 10 years ago at First Baptist Church, so amen for that. That's pretty cool. He's, he's here now. So, uh, uh, so yeah, it's exciting uh, for them. And um, so we have refreshments for you, by the way. Actually, a bunch of awesome donuts and youth room, and I have a gift for you. Jason didn't tell you that. So if you haven't went that way after service, don't leave now. Wait till the service is over and go get some donuts and, and, and a, a gift. Uh, so anyway, uh, Jason come to me about two weeks ago, and he says, uh, kind of, I'm walking in my office, and he kind of does this, and I'm like, oh, you don't do that very often. What's, what's up, you know? And he says, uh, hey, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's up? He goes, I need you to preach on the 22nd. So, okay, I got a lot going on, you know? The youth guy, and I got graduation stuff, and I've got a camp coming up. We had a camp meeting last Wednesday, um, mission trip. So, I mean, I had them, but I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm called. Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay, I'm in. I said, stand alone, right? No, that's preacher talk. Stand alone means, so you notice we're an we're axe, right? So stand alone means I get to preach what I want to preach and not have to preach an axe, right? And I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of spoilt with that. I've been kind of lucky of falling into that standalone sermons. He goes, nah, I need you to preach, preach Acts chapter 23. And I'm like, well, hey, I'm, I'm the standalone guy. What, what do you mean, Acts 23? I'm, remember, I'm just in the standalone guy. He goes, no, I need, you, I need you in Acts chapter 23. So I'm like, okay, all right. So I go to my office, and I read Acts chapter 23 because I don't have it memorized, I'll be honest with you. I had an idea, but I, okay, I want to read it, and I read it. And uh, I'm going to tell you something, guys. Within 10 minutes of him asking me, the Lord laid this on my heart, what I'm going to share with you this morning, okay? And what, what I needed to do this morning. And so that's what I'm going to be obedient to that. And uh, he laid literally one verse uh, out of Acts chapter 23, On my heart, it's verse 6, okay? I'm going to read it to you right now. It says, Now when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other were Pharisees, he cried out to the council, Brothers, I'm a Pharisee. I'm a son of a Pharisee. It is with respect to the hope of the resurrection of the dead that I'm on trial. So Paul noticed the difference in the room. We we know he's on trial uh, in front of the the religious leaders. He he identified that that some were Sadducees and there some were Pharisees. And, and, and the difference they had in beliefs, okay? The Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead. The Sadducees did, did not. But, it, but, but he lays this out for them, and he lets them know that I'm on trial for the hope I have in Jesus, for the hope I have in the resurrection of the dead. And, and just a side note here, if you've been following Acts, and I know you have because you've been here, and we're in Acts chapter 23, um, man, we know, just I want to clear this up. I want you to understand this, that that that... that Paul was bold in his faith, wasn't he? Amen? Paul, Paul was, uh, he was on fire for Jesus, was he not? I mean, he was the missionary of, of, of missionaries. Um, um, Peter, you know, he, he was bold for his faith. John, all the apostles were. And yeah, they, don't get me wrong, they, they were apostles. They were called to do that. But let me tell you something. Before the Holy Spirit entered in Paul's life, Paul wasn't that way, was he? He was Saul of Tarsus. He was on the road to Damascus. We just heard it last week. And what was he going to do? Go gather up some Christians to, to persecute, to kill, to imprison. Okay, that's what his job was. Peter, before he encountered the Holy Spirit and Jesus, and, 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 and that way with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, he was in an upper room, didn't know what to do, kind of scared. Okay. Uh, he denied Christ before that three times. We know that story. And so what changed? The Holy Spirit came. And I'm going to tell you guys to something, and I think we need to rel- just realize this, that the same Holy Spirit that dwelled in Paul and all the stuff he's doing in Acts, and the same Holy Spirit that dwells in John and Peter and, and back in, in Acts, man, that's the same Holy Spirit, if you're a believer, that dwells in you today. Amen? I mean, we, we can have that boldness in Christ. We can have that, that on fire for Jesus in Christ. I just wanted to say that because I just feel like God laid that on my heart to, to, to tell you about. But, but this word in, in, in Acts chapter 23, verse 6, that, 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 that stood out to me, 
is the word trial, okay? So Paul was on trial for his faith, for, for being a follower of Jesus. And we see that through the books of, book of Acts. You know, Peter and John's on trial in Acts chapter 5 and 6. And, and we see this happening, that the persecution that comes. And he's on trial. And, and there was a moment in my life that, that somebody asked this question of me. Okay? And I'm just going to read it to you because I, I, I don't want to mess it up. And they said, if, Justin, if you're on trial and the charge was being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Could a jury of your peers convict you for being a Christian? And I'll tell you, I knew the answer to that right when they asked me that question. You know, here's the deal. The evidence just can't be church attendance. I'm glad you're here this morning because I, it's part of my testimony. I was a good church attender because that's circumstantial evidence, right? You're, you're here. I'm glad you're here. But what does that show when it comes down to it, right? It says, one more question. Is there enough evidence against you to convict you of being a Christian? And, and my answer, the point in my life where my answer that I had to come to grips was, was No. And so I want to share my testimony with you this morning. That's what I feel led to do this morning. And uh, uh, God just laid this on my heart. I, I had a different direction I could go, but I was like, over and over. I, I feel like I'm doing what God's want me to do this morning, share my testimony. So I'm going to be just raw with you for a moment. I'm going to be just honest with you for a moment here. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you the whole time, not just for a moment. As I'm saying that, I'm like, well, okay. But seriously, I, I want to share my story to you. It's, it's not, I don't, I'm not going to, it just says share my story in my notes. So I just want to get really, uh, just, just real with you and, and, and let you know that I was saved a, as, a, as a young man, a uh, young boy, 12 years old, 1988, Lavaca, Arkansas. I wasn't raised in church. My, uh, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher. He was actually a Baptist preacher here from 1970 to 78. He retired and became an evangelist, and, and, and them guys go and, and they do revivals. And so I was up here, uh, down here. I, I lived up north of here, and uh, uh, for the summer, for about three weeks with my grandparents, and, and we were always going places. And he was preaching a revival. And the third day of that revival, I didn't plan it. I was listening. I was 12 years old. I was paying more attention. I walked down that aisle, and I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen? And I really believe, and I'll tell you this story, but I really believe that was the moment. I battled through this, that, that, that Christ came in my life, right? But the, the problem was is, is, is I was never really discipled. I had faith. We come in faith, right? We don't come with knowledge, we, we come in with faith, and then our knowledge grows through discipleship. But I, I kind of lacked that discipleship. I didn't have a lot of that discipleship in my life. My parents, my dad, my parents got divorced when I was two, two and a half. Uh, and and my, my dad wasn't in church at the time. My, my mom wasn't in church at the time. My dad wasn't, wasn't even a, a believer at the time. Um, and so I didn't have that, that foundation of that. I only saw my grandparents every, every now and again and, and uh, um, Really no excuse, but that was the truth of the matter. And so you can imagine, you know, my middle school life and, and, and on, in, in my high school days, uh, I was not um, living for Jesus. And I felt conviction. I felt conviction, but I wasn't, uh, definitely wasn't living uh, for Christ at all. Um, there were a lot of regrets. I influenced a lot of people. I had influence over some people, um, like we all do. And I didn't influence them towards the kingdom. I influenced them towards a different direction. That's not, that was the wide path, not the narrow path. And uh, regrets to this day uh, for that. Um, um, so fast forward a little bit and um, got, went to college and, and um, went to, um, man, I, I, after that year two of college or so, uh, Lord started working on my heart a little bit and, and, and I got baptized um, in Black Fork River, I got baptized. I was home one weekend, and, and my, my step-grandpa was a, ended up being called to the ministry late in life, and he baptized me, and, and, and I never was baptized. And uh, I met a young lady named Janessa uh, Waymire. Uh, you guys know the Waymire family. And so uh, first thing Terry did when I first met her, asked me if I was a Christian. I didn't even hardly say hello to her. I mean, asked me if I was a believer, uh, you know. And, and I was. I really believe I was. Uh, but, but, you know, if being... Being with the Waymar family, you figure out pretty quick what discipleship looks like, what it means to walk with the Lord. And, and so um, we got married. We lived in Manfred, Oklahoma. And let me tell you something, for about a year and a half, uh, we went to church, guys. We went to church. We went to church at Lakeside Baptist Church in Manfred, Oklahoma. 
I went to Sunday school um, at Lakeside Baptist Church in Manford, Oklahoma. We were part of that church. We went. We tithed. We tithed. We tithed. And, and we were there. We were there pretty often, unless we were coming back home for, for any reason. We were there. We were church. I was a church tender. We moved to, to West Fork, Arkansas, uh, uh, and, 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 and right outside of Fayetteville, Arkansas, we went to West Fork First Baptist Church for seven years, okay? And let me, let me, let me tell you, we went to Sunday school. We had an awesome Sunday school uh, program there. Delmore Farrell was our Sunday school teacher. He was an amazing man of God. He's, he's went on to be with the Lord now. Oh, man, I learned so much there. Um, listen, I served in the Awana program on Sunday nights, kids' ministry. I, I could sing the song for you right now. I sang it for the staff earlier this week. I'm not going to do that. If you want to hear it later on, catch me, and I'll, I'll sing it to you. But listen, we were there. Now, listen, I served in the Awana program and, and on Sunday nights. But during football season, if the Raiders were playing, a three o'clock game, and they did a lot because they're a West Coast team. I missed that night. So they, they knew. They knew I wasn't going to be there. I was going to be late them nights because uh, I'm a Raiders fan, unfortunately. So, so you know, I was, on a, I was on the softball team. We had church league softball. I was on the softball team. We beat all the Fayetteville. We won championships. We beat the Fayetteville teams. Uh, played basketball on Monday nights. I was involved is what I'm getting at, okay? We were highly involved in that church. But if someone asked me this question, and they did, my, my answer would be no, because here's why. Here's why. I was a good church attender, <clears throat> but I was not the spiritual leader in my house. I never opened this up during the week, never read my Bible, ever. Never prayed besides meals, because that's what we do as men. We have to pray over our, our meals, and it's the Southern thing to do. But I never prayed and reached out to, to the Lord much at all. Never prayed with, prayed with my wife. I wasn't the spiritual leader that God called me to be whatsoever. Whatsoever. And it's, it's embarrassing to think about and now to share with you this morning. But that's what it was. That's what I was. I was a phony when it, when it came to walk in my faith. I was a joke. Let me tell you something. This right here. You know what I used to say? I don't like to read. I'm not much on reading. You know, and this is, this is the truth of the matter is this, this ain't the People magazine, right? This is the Word of God, you know? And some of you guys might say that today, guys and gals, and I don't maybe step on some toes, but that was pathetic of me to think that, that I couldn't spend time reading God's Word. It's God's Word. It's, it's invaluable. It's, it's God's Word for us. It's, it's been preserved all these years. It's, we, we live in a country that, that is absolutely just uh, have freedom in doing this. We don't have to look behind our shoulder. We don't got to hide in the closet and hide our Word of God. We, live, we have religious freedoms, thank, thank the Lord, and, and we can read this. And I, I didn't do it. I come home Sunday. I take my Bible to church. This is a pre-Bible app, right? And I, break, and, I, and I set it down, and I would look for it. Sunday morning, the following Sunday morning, trying to find it. I didn't know where it was. This went on for years and years and years. And let me tell you, there's several times in these years that, that, that I felt conviction. Oh, man, over and over. I felt conviction from the Holy Spirit. I knew I wasn't the man that God called me to be. I knew I wasn't leading my wife spiritually whatsoever. She was, and she was pretty good at it, by the way. She did awesome. She'd pray for me. I had a little girl growing up, had a little baby boy, um, and, and, and I wasn't the man that God called me to be at all, and I knew it. And over and over, I feel like it just happened over and over, I, I, I would hear this kind of sermon, you know, and I'd be like, man, I know I'm not where I need to be, Lord. And I, I would sit out in a pew or a chair, and I would, I, would, I, would, I would feel conviction, and I would come, sometimes come up here and, 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 and pray, and my wife would come with me, or I'd pray at my seat, and afterwards I'd be in the car, and I would apologize to her. I'd say, man, I'm so sorry, babe. I know that, that uh, I'm not stepping up and, and being the man that God called me to be. And, and that's going to change. And about three hours later, I would just kind of like, just forget about it. Just got to go on with life. And here's the deal. Guys, you know, you start comparing yourself to others, and, but it's, I wasn't out at bars and out carousing and out with the boys all late night. I was a family man. We went to church, right? But I just look back on that. I was the biggest phony. I was a fraud, I wasn't doing what God called me to do. 
And I heard about it all the time. I told you we had a great Sunday school class. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. Eventually, we moved back here, started building a home, and, and in that process, man, and I, I wish I could tell you there was one more sermon that I heard about carnal Christianity, but it didn't happen just overnight, but man, it happened within a few weeks, and God started working on my heart, and he broke me in half in a good way. It wasn't some like incident that happened, it's just he just brought me to my knees, and I finally surrendered my whole life to him, Amen. I only gave my whole life to Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it felt good. I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I can't put my Bible down. I'm reading. I'm taking notes. I'm not a note taker. Okay? I'm taking notes. I'm sobbing in my living room by myself reading the Bible. And I wanted to tell people about it. I was, I was freaking people out wanting to have Bible studies with them and talk to them about this. And my parents and my, my, my dad and my brother and, and Jason and these other people in my life, Brandon Lopez, I I'm, I'm want to talk to them, I want to visit with them. I want to share with them what God's done in my life and what he's doing in my life. And uh, it, was, it was an overwhelming time for me. Through this, and this is a different story, but through this, as it went on, uh, God uh, called me to do uh, vocational ministry. And, I, you know, he told me that 15 years ago. I was like, you're stinking crazy. There's no way I'm doing that, something like that. That's not me, right? So God uh, finally got a hold of my life. And I just, I resisted. I resisted for years, for seven, 10 years. I just kept saying, yeah, I got this. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, you, when I asked that question earlier about being on trial, you, know, you knew the answer because I knew the answer right when I asked that question. So I want to share with you, and you may have it going on. You may be, you may be getting after it, and I, and I praise, I hope and, and pray to God that you do. But I'm going to share three things this morning that prompt me to finally uh, stop living that carnal Christian lifestyle, this, if, if you can do that, right? Um, stop just uh, going through the motions and just being a church attender. And these are simple, guys. These are, I'm, I'm a simple guy. These, these, these are simple. These are nothing, these are nothing just, uh, uh, just like, oh, you know, he's going to say this. And, oh, my gosh, that's, 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 I've never thought of that. These are simple things, but I'm just laying on the, uh, out what the Lord shared with me and wanted me to share with you. And, 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 th- and these are verses, too, that I'm going to share with you that the Lord used, in, and I found in some notes that, that, that the Lord used to really um, minister to me uh, a little over 10 years ago now. Number one, it's simple, but it's understanding what Jesus did for me. Understanding what Jesus did for me. Acknowledging the gospel, right? Acknowledging the gospel. Understanding that, that Romans 6.23, a simple verse. You've heard this verse. But I mean, it's, I feel like for the first time, it just pops off off the page for me. And it said, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You, you know, you read that, it's easy to read that sentence and go, yep, that's, 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 that's great. Amen, right? But, but let's look at it. The wage of sin is death, comma. What do we get for being a sinner? What's our wage? What do we get for being a sinner? Death. And that's, that's spiritual death, right? That's, we're all physically dying. That's spiritual death. But, that comma and that but is so important because if, if it ended there, we have no hope. But, but we do have hope. We have hope in Christ. And it says, um, it says, but there's a free gift out there. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't got to earn it anyway. We give our life to it, but we don't have to earn it, right? You don't earn gifts. That free gift is of God, and that free gift is eternal life. And that free gift of eternal life from God is only through Jesus Christ, our Lord, only. And so we put our faith and trust in him. We give our whole life to him. We don't give a little bit of it. We don't, we don't just say, you know what, I'm going I'm to do this and, 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 and kind of do my own thing, right? How about Galatians 2.20? I love this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's, it's, it's the old justice has got to go completely. And there's a new, there's a new Justin in Christ, and so um, I'm going to tell you something that, that, that as always, I look back on in and, and, and these years, these, 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 these years that I went through the motions and I, 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 I attended church and I, I, I did what you're supposed to do, right? Man, 
Jesus loved me through all of it anyway. Amen? He pursued me. He continued to pursue me. He loved me. He just loved me. He died for me knowing I was going to do stuff like that and just, and just ignore him for the most part and go through the motions. He loved me anyway. Guys, that's the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus. He loved me anyway. Regardless, he loved me anyway. The second thing that really spurred me on and, and, and prompted me to finally uh, give, it, give it all to Jesus was the conviction from the Holy Spirit. I shared that with you over and over and over again. And I mean, I would feel it. I'd feel that conviction big time. I would feel it. And um, man, it, it would bring me to my knees momentarily. And finally, it, it, it brought me to my knees uh, for, for good. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, 16. You guys heard this. But man, it's, it's, it, when Jesus says, I know your works, you're neither cold nor hot. Would rather that you uh, be either cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth, says Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prosper in your, prosper in your name, uh, cast out demons in your name, and do so many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You know the damage that we do, the damage that we do to the kingdom? The damage I did to the kingdom of God, being a, a Christian and just going to church and, and then my, the rest of my life, how I spoke, how I acted, just to kind of did what Justin wanted to do. The damage I do, We, we do damage to the kingdom when we're supposed to be ambassadors for Jesus and we claim that and our life doesn't look that way whatsoever. The damage we do uh, is, is mm, a lot of regrets. Third thing, and, and this is the last thing here, that it was, was asking myself a question and that question was, uh, I guess I was at, right at 30 years old, you asked the question, what kind of legacy am I leaving behind? You know, I had um, went to a funeral about this time. This was in a different, different city. A guy I used to work with briefly and, and a guy that, you know, we're in the Bible Belt, guys. You, so most folks um, are Christians, right? We don't. Now, that's starting to change a little bit. People are more bold to let you know they're not. But, but for the most part, I mean, you know, People are believers here. They claim to be believers. But, but this guy didn't. He would let you know that he was not a believer. He was not a Christian. And so that was rare. Right? I mean, especially back then, it's, again, it's, it still is a little bit today, but, but it's rare. And so I actually, even though I wasn't, I actually shared the gospel with him on a road trip one time. And, uh, of course, he didn't accept, you know, Christ. And I don't know if he did or ever or not, but I don't believe he did, but I don't know. He worked for a different company later on. He died, tragically, at a kind of a young age and went to the funeral. And like I said, different town. And um, it, was, it was a very awkward funeral. And the legacy he left and, the, and what, and I, I wasn't in ministry at the time, but I really, for the first time, like, could feel like, man, I feel sorry for that, that preacher up there. I was at a funeral home, the sermon was, and basically at the end of the day, his legacy was that he was a good tipper. He left good tips at restaurants and bars or whatever. He was a good tipper. I met that pastor said that about 12 times and really elevated that. And I'm thinking, man, he's a good tipper. That's it. He's gone. And that's the legacy he's going to leave behind is he's a good tipper. And so I started thinking about my, my legacy. You know, I got this little girl running around and, and this baby boy, and I'm thinking, man, how will folks remember Justin? 
I jotted a few things down. He, he had a short fuse at times. That's, that's true. That's my sin struggle. I've been told I'm loud. He was a loud guy. My family says I'm loud a lot. I can whisper something at a restaurant and I get in trouble. I said, I'm quiet. I just whispered it to you. Dad, you're loud. Honey, you're loud. Whatever. Anyway, I get told that I'm loud. I'm a, I'm a little opinionated sometimes. I feel like because that I'm not always approachable, I want to be approachable. Hey, uh, some positive things. I cook on a chuck wagon. I have an authentic chuck wagon from that. 1890 I cook on. That's something that, that's a legacy, right? I'm a good, decent husband and father. I wrote that. I, I hope that's true. How about, I, I, I feel like I'm a pretty good old boy too. I really do. You know, fit well here in this, this Lafour County area. Um, I'm a good old boy. You know, all that stuff is, is, what is that? We know that most folks, when they pass away, they were a good old boy, right? How about he loved Jesus? I want that to be, he loved Jesus. It was obvious he loved Jesus. He wasn't shy about the gospel. He was passionate about it. He wanted to talk about it all the time. I know my students probably get tired of hearing about it. We talk about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. How about that? Nothing else matters. Everything in life is, is, is fleeting, guys, but that. Teach your children about hunting, fishing, ranching, sports of all kinds, music. Man, yeah, leave that legacy with them. Teach them things. Teach them how to do things. Experience life with them. But more importantly, teach them about Jesus and teach them about the gospel because the subject of Jesus and the gospel lasts in eternity. Nothing else really matters, does it? There's a ranch on I-40, and um, it's right before you get to Shawnee. It's on, a, it's on the north side of the road, right side of the road, if you're heading towards Oklahoma City. And I've um, been going up there. My daughter's going to school in Norman, and so I noticed it even a, a couple years ago, and, and they, I don't know the name of the ranch. It has a white picket fence around it, and it's got a nice little white barn, like a hoop barn, and, and, and it was nice at one time. I mean, it was top notch. And now you go and glance at it. You know, you're on I 40, you're going, you know, the speed limit, 75 miles an hour, and, and, and you look to your right, and it's there and it's gone. But, but every time I look at it, it's all grown up now. The white picket fences are kind of falling over and kind of, there's like some, they were like sprigs, but now they're like growing up like little trees growing out of the corner of the barn and stuff. And I feel like it's happened like that. It's like, wow. You know, that's all grown up. And every time I go by it, from the first time I saw this, it's all grown up. Because I used to go by and go, man, that's nice. What does my place look like that? You know, I don't weed eat around my fences. I kill it. I spray it. Amen? I ain't weed eating out there. No one sees it anyway. I'm going to kill the dog out of it. But man, they weed eat. That's awesome. And so, but I saw that. And the first, man, the Lord just laid on my heart for the first time. I saw it. I was like, yeah, life is fleeting. It doesn't last. And I thought, I think to myself, like, y'all, the work I do on my property and with my cows and, and with my fences and burning brush piles and cleaning stuff up, on these days, like, I know my daughter's probably not going to do nothing with it. If my son moves off and I kick off on these days and go be with Jesus, I mean, I know my daughter, my, my wife ain't getting out there and burning brush piles and, and brush hogging. Amen? She, she's like, I ain't doing that. So what's going to happen? It's going to grow up. It's going to go back to where it was. And so... The legacy that I can leave behind is, is Jesus. And, I, you know, I, I'm, I am, I've got flaws. I tell you this stuff, and I think, you know, they will just, man, he's got it together now. Boy, he, he turned his life around over, a little over 10 years ago, and, man, he is, he is, he is on fire. Man, I, I, are you kidding me? Ups and downs, up and down, hot and cold. But I acknowledge this, that I, that, that I love Jesus. I gave my whole life to Jesus. And I don't know where you're at this morning, but in closing, I want to say this to you. I don't know where you're at, but, but you know where you're at. You know where you're at right now with your walk, 
students speaking to you today and, 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 and graduates, um, man, if you haven't done it, give your whole life to Jesus. Give it all to him today. Don't put it off. Like Jason said, it's, it's, it's your faith. It's not your parents' faith. It's your faith. Maybe you're like me and, and you need to be broken in half in a good way out there, guys. Maybe that needs to happen to you. Um, I hope my story helps. And, and, and you know, I, was, I say this to my students a lot, and it's so true. Uh, you're not here by accident this morning to hear this. Uh, God had you here for a reason to hear this this morning. And I pray that you will respond however God leads you to respond. It's my prayer. It's been my prayer all week. Um, and so um, um, I just pray it helps. And, and, and um, again, the best decision in my life was, was giving all myself to the Lord and, and deciding to follow him with all my heart. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just... Uh, just come to you this morning and just uh, thankful for the families that are here and the men and women that are here and the graduates and students, Lord, and um, well, I lift them up to you right now. I lift these graduates up to you, and, and um, but I pray that um, when you get a hold of their heart, Lord, that um, you just reveal yourself daily to them through your spirit. Lord, I pray that um, if there's anybody here today that that is living that carnal Christian lifestyle, just that, if you can do that, if, if just this, this, this idea of coming to church a, a Sunday or two or all four of them a month and, and, and just kind of going through the motions, I, I pray, Lord, that, that you convict them like you convicted me. And you still to this day, when I go down that path, Lord, I just pray that um, we all get the it factor of, of, of what it means to, to be a believer, Lord, to um, the legacies that, that we are leaving behind. What are they? Lord, that we all just need that simple legacy of they just love Jesus. Lord, I pray that we teach our children and our grandchildren the gospel daily. Lord, I pray if there's anybody here that doesn't know you today, that today would be their day of salvation. I pray there's anybody that needs prayer, they would come forward and be bold about that, Lord. And I just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.